Hi everyone. Okay, I'm just now getting on. Um, I am waiting for Elaine to arrive. I'm not used to this format when I do my interviews. So hopefully this all works out. Hi Carol. Okay, I see Carol. Hey Carol. Um, okay, so I'm just waiting to see when Elaine shows up. Um, Winter's here. Hi Winter. Liz. So, um, normally I do, Nikki's here, normally I do the interviews on Zoom. Um, and so this is be something new for me to try. Um, but I've been trying to get Elaine here um, to do this interview with me for quite some time. So now this is the easiest way for both of us to do it. So I see lots of people attending. So hopefully I did not miss Elaine. Okay. All right, so... Um, my group is called Sacred Dance for Trance, and it is for trance and physical mediumship development. Um, members can come and learn more about it. Um, the interviews, there's like 30, maybe 35 as of today interviews, um, where members are and, and trance mediums and physical mediums are sharing their story, their development, and offering beautiful advice for those that are interested in developing. Okay, let me, I need to double check here real quick, guys. I do not see Elaine yet. We also have two subgroups. One is called SDWT, Home Circle Audio and Video Sharing. And that's where members from their circles can put in audio and video for members to see. And then we have another one called SDWT, Online and In-Person Circles. And that's where members can come and join or create a circle in person or online. And so far we've had some good success there. So if you're guided to create one or join one, definitely join that subgroup. Okay, let me see. Matthew, Allison, Anne. All right, hopefully is Elaine here. I hope I did not, I don't think I seen her. Let me double check. Okay. All right, sorry guys, I'm just not used to this. All right. Okay. All right, Roberto, Roberto. Okay, still no. All right, so we're just waiting on Elaine to show up. And I see so many of you here already. So what we're going to be talking about and what I do in the interviews is I, again, I ask them how everything started for them. And um, then I have a bunch of questions about their development, which really helps others, you know, um, when they answer this. She can send a request. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Um, All right, Elaine, if you're watching, just go ahead and comment so I can see you. All right, where is the request? I'm looking for a request. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry, Elaine. Okay. Okay. Want to be in your video. Elaine. Mm. Hello, Elaine. Hello. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. I think I've got everything situated here. Thank you so much, Elaine, for being with us today. Um we have, we have definitely been trying to do this for quite some time. I definitely since last year, but uh, technology and um, scheduling has really stopped that. That's enough. Okay. Sorry, it was a bit loud. Oh no, no worries. So um, again, first let me introduce you guys. This is Elaine Thorpe. She's a trans medium from the UK. She is uh, also, she has a page called Spiritual Wisdom, which you definitely want to join because she goes live there and does trans de um, demonstrations there. So again, that's Spiritual Wisdom on Facebook. I believe you also have a YouTube channel, Elaine, right? 
Yes, I do. That's that's been up there for quite a while, a yes. few years now. That my son put that up there, and, and that's where you can uh, see see some of my older videos. Uh, I will plan to put some new ones on there in the future, I expect. Okay, that's perfect. Um, so definitely, that would be YouTube Elaine Thorpe. She has lots of stuff like that. She's also does spear or art, right? And, and I definitely want to show the art that I have. Um, but it's spiritually inspired. And I'm definitely going to show you this because it's beautiful. Um, so this is the first one. Can you see that? Or is it too bright in here? It's too bright, isn't it? Oh, there it is. Yeah. And just that, no, that one is not there very well. Okay. Well, that one's one. Well. we'll definitely share this in the interview. Um, but my gosh, your art alone is beautiful. And you say, um, I think there was one where your guide comes in as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he, he somehow managed to get into the picture and I, I enhanced it and, and sort of zoomed it in a bit. Is that Probably. the one right there? Yeah, you can't see it very well on here. Yeah, you can't. Oh, got no. Yeah. But I know that it's on your page, right? You Did you share that into your spiritual wisdom page? I haven't done that yet because I've got, I've got to work on that page a little bit, but it's uh, it's finding the time to do so. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to see how I can move these pictures of people. I guess not. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now I got it. Okay. So I figure how we would start is with every interview that I ever do, I love to hear how everything started for you. And even if we go way back when to when you got into mental mediumship and then now to your, uh, your current journey of being a trans medium, could you share your story with us here? Well, my first experience of mediumship when I was young was with my father when I sat in his circle and, and he was a physical medium and we used to have the trumpet going around and, and all the toys and the drums would play. We'd have direct voice. I think he had a few airports over the years. He had a levitation. Um, so he was a, an amazing medium. My dad, he got to travel to Iceland and demonstrate over there for quite a few people until he got ill and then he couldn't do it no more. And, and then I guess uh, I went away from it, got married, had my children, what have you. And then I, I think I got to about... Uh, 35 and I somehow began to get interested in it again uh, it, it seemed to come in sporadically and I'd give messages to my friends on and off and, and it was hardly ever there so and then I, I started leaving tapes on in the house and I'd have spirit things coming on in there oh. I'd come back into the house and there'd be you know my twin would be on there and other noises would be on it and I, I sort of left it for a while. And then I went away on a holiday to Ireland and I did miss my father-in-law. And I asked him to make his presence known and he he didn't do anything. So I, I drifted off to sleep. I was sort of half, in a half sleep and everything was quiet. The, the children were asleep. My, my husband was drifting off. And all of a sudden I felt my stomach pull in and because I was laying on the, my stomach. And and then this voice bellowed out of me from, from nowhere. And I, I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know anything about trance. All I knew was about the physical side of the mediumship, what my parents had taught me. They didn't ever really mention anything to do with trance or any explanation of it. And so I, I didn't know what it was, you see. So he, I think he was speaking to his son through me and trying to get to him. And it, apparently it's, it sounded really loud and... I thought it was quiet. I, I just thought it was quiet. And then I, I realised that something uh, must be there. I must have something. So I, I rang a hypnotherapist named Jean of Kent, or Jean Kent, her name is. And she, she was a hypnotherapist. But she used to sit with my father and my mother. So she'd known her many years. So I phoned her and asked her for advice. And it just so turned out that she was a trance teacher. Wow. The, then she guided me to a lady named Kay Austin, and I started sitting in her group weekly. And I, in the end, I absolutely loved it. I became very dedicated to it until I left Kay's circle. And then I thought, well, I'll start my own up 
and have people to sit for me. So I, I uh, sat in my friend's house and he gave permission for them all to sit and we sat in darkened conditions at first because we we thought we might try for physical but no, nothing was really happening and I just was continuing with the trance and it was getting stronger. But as time went on, my guide learned to speak even more. You know, he, he would change my voice more as time went on. When he first came through, which was in a neighbour's house, it was quite a shock because I'd never known who my guide was, you see. So he came through and introduced himself. But he didn't speak like he does now. He, he kind of had to learn how to use me, how to speak properly. And eventually it came like it does now. Wow. Wow. I mean, I didn't know that your dad was a physical medium. So you had that background and you were like raised in that. Um, that's yeah. amazing. Very amazing. I think right from the age of about uh, 15, I, I first sat in his circle when I was 15 years old. And I, I didn't sit all the time with him. So they, they would sit regularly, but I, I would sit because I had to go to school and what have you. So I, I only sat on and off. And, and every time I sat, there was results and it was amazing. And that sometimes they'd sit in a loft in my mum's friend's loft. Mm -hmm. And it was freezing up there, but they'd all sit up there. And sometimes they'd get nothing for weeks. And then, and then all of a sudden it would all come and it would be sporadic, you know. So it, that's how it went. But he was a fantastic medium, honestly. Uh, uh, and I do long to see uh, that again if I get a chance. Oh, yes. Um, how long have you been developing um, the trance? Oh, I've, I've sat, I have a group that I sit in once a fortnight. We used to sit weekly, but I sit there once a fortnight and I, I still continue to develop. What wow. I'm trying to do is let go a little bit more, but... I, I, I'm quite happy with what I'm doing. I'm not worried about physical mediumship. I'm, I'm quite happy with doing what I'm doing with my with my guide, and he's very strong when he comes through, just speaking through me. So that that part of it I enjoy. Whereas the the physical mediumship, there's there's too many conditions that you've got to think about. There's there's too many um, what would you say? risks with it you know you've got to have enough ectoplasm within you to be able to produce that physical so I'm, I'm enjoying this the trance and everything about it and everything about it. you know what happens every time I do an interview is I have everybody knows I have a list of questions here and usually in the very beginning um you I asked you one question and you probably already answered six of the questions already so I'm always like trying to scatter myself okay what have I what do I need to ask her next um I love that that you're still you're still actually sitting right now in a circle that you still yeah, develop yeah. Wow, awesome awesome um we have a lot of people ask us about sitting in the power um it, was that something that you did did you sit in the power yeah, because what we did before we started, uh, in, in the group that I went to, the, the lady used to say, well, she put meditation on and we'd have to meditate and relax to that music first. So I became accustomed to music to meditate to. Some people prefer to sit in silence, but I, I prefer to sit with music. Music just takes me away to another place that's the best way to meditate for me everybody has their own way of doing it but yes that's that's how I started I would sit religiously every week and I'd meditate with with her and then we'd start working our way into the trance we'd start all relaxing together and she'd keep an eye on us all and then she'd she'd start asking if anybody had anybody with them so they'd their guides would try and step forward some would speak, others wouldn't. And, and that's how it went. I absolutely loved it there. Um, but then it was time to, for me to move on and I had to sit for, for my own development. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody sort of went their separate ways in the end uh, over time. Yeah, but, you know um, what I've noticed? I mean, um, I've heard about circles and you just, you know, they evolve, they grow, and then they stop and you get put into another group of people to grow with. So that kind of sounds like what's happened with you. 
Um, yes, and I'm yes. like you. I need music. I need music when I sit. So a lot of people don't, but I'm, I'm definitely just like you when it comes to that. If you can, okay, how does blending in the beginning, if you can remember, or even now, how does blending with your guide or your control feel? Could you describe that, explain that a little bit? It kind of feels, when you start relaxing, you see pictures in your mind and, and they show you things. And when you start to relax, you feel him stepping in from the back. You feel a slight chill down your back. And, and then you know you can feel that blending. You feel his face forming over yours. Uh, you feel all of his uh, stature coming in and, and, and his energy. And that's when I know he's ready to speak. You'll say to my mind, are you ready? And I'll, and I'll say back to him, yes, I'm ready now. So he waits until I'm ready. And then he, he asks me if I'm ready. And, and then we'll go ahead and he'll start to speak. Wow, beautiful. I, you know what? All the questions that I usually ask are geared towards like new members starting out on their trans development. And so you probably have been asked these a dozen times by other people. Um, one question that get, I get asked a lot is, when you first sit for trans, do you set an intention every time or you, you're just there, you're sitting for trans? Uh, I set an intention. I, I start off with a prayer. I do a prayer and I ask for protection to be given to me and that this may last throughout the proceedings and beyond that. And and then I ask the, the spirit and the guides to come to me and whoever I'm going to be speaking to, if it's just a circle, I just ask the spirit guides and the loved ones to come in. And then I start to breathe and relax. I mean, you will find that... I've watched almost every trance medium, and just as they're going to go into a relaxed state, they take a huge deep breath. It's just a habit that humans do, and, and that prepares them when they breathe out again. They're relaxing, so each time you breathe in, take that deep breath in and take the deep breath out, you're automatically slowing yourself down and, and starting to relax. Wow, okay. I think that's the first time somebody's mentioned that in any of the interviews and described it the way you're describing it. So I'm glad that you brought that up. So Jonathan, when I first saw one of your videos and I believe I'm going to say this is that I think that you might be the only trans medium. Um, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but that has actually went live on Facebook and does this regularly. Um, there is, so there is in, another lady. He, her name is Lone. Lone Anderson. And, yes, and she Lone, and she actually, yes, yeah. and I believe Lone, she actually just started doing that, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So when I first saw you, and I was watching you, and then I saw the voice change, I was like, oh, what? It was just amazing. <laughs> it was amazing when I heard that, that voice change. Um, has Is Jonathan your main control, your main yes, guide? Yeah. Are there others that come through you as far as there, light? There is my uh, twin. She likes to come in. She she talks through me. And then when I'm sitting in circle, we have more come through. Sometimes uh, Grey Wolf will very briefly come through, and, and he's very abrupt and loud, but he only says a few things and goes. And then sometimes there are other souls that want to come through and say hello to us. So... Sometimes I can't remember who they are or, you know, different ones come through or loved ones may come through for the sitters and that's how it goes. You know, it's an experiment. It's an experiment, yes. Um, one of the other questions that members ask about guides when they're first getting to know um, their control or their guide that comes in, have you, um, do you find it important to, to get the validation from members in your circle about who the guide is that's coming in, or do you kind of research them on in your own? I mean, how does that, how did that work for you when you first got to know Jonathan? Oh, no, say that again. Somebody's distracted me. Sorry. I keep putting oh, no. writing up on my screen. <laughs> how did you find out Jonathan's identity? Did that come through one of the members? Did it come through yourself? Um, and were you able to research him? 
I tried to re research him and I, I found something that seemed to resemble him. And then, then he started coming through and saying where he came from. Um, he gave my, my sons uh, his first name and his surname. And, and then um, he started saying that he came from Islington in London, that he was married in St. Mary's Church in Islington. And I thought, well, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll have a look and see if I can find him, you know, and, and it was a bit difficult. And my son found a John James Hunter, which mm -hmm. came from, uh, I think he must have been christened in Holborn, which is about a mile up the road from from uh, Islington. There's Highbury, there's Holborn, those, all the low surrounding places. So maybe that was him. And then I was taken to the uh, church a few weeks ago where he said he was married. That felt very strange going in there. And as we approached the church, there were all signs given to me. His surname appeared on the, on the front of a shop. And then uh, we came out of the church after we'd finished going in there. Look, I just happened to look up at a building, and the year 1845 was on the building. And I thought, well, that's strange, because he was said he was born in 1845. Then we drove up the road and there was a whole uh, panel of ad modern adverts that had Victorian people on them. And I thought, well, he must be sending me signs that he's here with me. Wow. So it was so strong. I, I got into Islington and, and I began to feel my heart racing. I began to feel very, very strong, like he wanted to come through. And obviously I couldn't bring him through. We were in the, in the car in the street, you know. But when we got there, it, it, was, it was wonderful. And they... They said, go, in, go into the trance. And I said, well, I can't do it in here. It's a church. <laughs> but there happened to be nobody in there. But he thanked them. He thanked them for, for taking me there. It seemed to be very tearful for them because it was overwhelming for all three of us. And that was, a, the, you know, it's, it's really moving. It was really. But he, he told us bef long, long before I knew about the church, he told us that the the church he was married in had been bombed in the Second World War. And I thought, well, I'll just take this as a pinch of salt. I'll look this place up. And it had been bombed in the Second World War. And then he said part of it had remained. So part of the church had remained. When I looked at the picture on the Internet, part of the church had remained just like he'd said. So then they built they built it to the same specific well, the similar specifications as to what the old church was, but added larger windows. And I thought, wow, it's just everything he said is here is true. Wow. Oh, unbelievable. And I thought, well, oh, you, know, you really are and then he appeared in my picture and and I thought, well this is incredible. He's really um intent on letting me know that he's real and and then I saw him in a dream and, and as clear as day it was almost exact as what my friend painted him as the first friend she she described uh, she, he described himself to her in our circle she painted him and when he was in the dream he was exactly like that Wow. You know, I love hearing the stories of how you're led to finding out more information about your guide. And everybody talks about having signs, you know, and seeing like you with the sign outside, looking up and seeing the surname. And, oh, I love hearing about that. Twice um, I've seen the surname. And it's always when we've been going into London. Wow. And then he said to me in the circle a few years ago, he said to me, what about the Dorchester Hotel? And I, I thought, he told that to the group, and I thought, what's he said that for? What's he said that for? And this was a few years ago. So anyway, I was, we were, I was going up to London to do a demonstration, and she got, somehow the road was blocked, so she had to take a different turning, you see. And then her mother in the back was laughing. She said, oh, this is just typical. This happens when we're going to, a, you know, we've got to get there on time to so this demo. They, they're all like, people were going to be waiting for us and we must have driven around for about oh a good three quarters of an hour to an hour stuck in this traffic and and being diverted you see mm -hmm. so uh, in, i came in it came into mind 
about I wanted to remember this hotel that he'd mentioned in London. And I thought to myself, damn it, I can't remember the name of the hotel. Will you please give it to me? I said, it's just typical. I've forgotten. I was trying to tell them about what he'd said. And I couldn't get the memory of this hotel. I couldn't get it. And all of a sudden, wham, it came into my mind. It said the Dorchester. And I said, quick, it's the Dorchester. It's the Dorchester. She said, we're about a few minutes up the road from that. Wow. She, I said, well, I said, uh, you know what they've gone and done, don't you? He wanted me to show the place for some obscure reason. He's probably arranged everything so we had to drive past this Dorchester so he could show me the place I thought this is weird <laughs> oh my goodness. no I mean it sounds wonderful though that you're um being guided there to it see that it's strange and I thought well why did he want to show me that place you see so oh. it's got some purpose or it I don't know but yeah that that was uh like as far as it went and then so many other signs that he sent me Amazing. Just amazing. I love hearing those stories and the signs. Um, so one question that comes up every single time, and I ask this because, you know, a lot of members have actually helped me with the questions. Um, I, I'm only as good as the questions are, that are asked. So when Jonathan comes through or when you go into trance, are you, do you go into a light, medium or deep trance? I go into a medium state because I, medium. you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you and say I go out of body. I don't. I I can hear every word he's saying, but then I forget bits. So it's a bit like having a long conversation and you you forget a few of the things that have been said. I did sit in circle, uh, I think it was a few months ago, and I had a bit of a strange experience, and I felt myself putting my foot on some on some grass, and as soon as I put my foot on the grass my feet started coming out of my physical body and I thought, oh, oh, I got a bit frightened and I didn't like it. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Um, and see, you just answered three of my questions right there and then again because um, I was going to ask if you remembered um, when you were in trance, if you remembered or, or were able to be re recall information that was coming through. So when you go into the medium state... Are you do you are you still somewhere else? Do you go back and forth? Is that what it is? Yeah, I can. I, it's it's a little bit like I'm sitting in my own body and he's sitting in it as well, and it and it's a little bit like you're in the background and you're listening to his conversation. I mean, at times I've felt like I've fall I've been falling asleep. It's only happened a few times recently, and it feels like. I've gone drowsy and his voice is up here and my my whole head's down there. So he's up there somewhere and I'm down here. Wow. Well, that feels rather strange because you feel very, very drowsy. drowsy. And, and you could, but you can still listen to his voice, but it's above your head. That's a little strange. And you know what? I actually, um, I've heard of the different levels. People can go into trance at different levels. So this is beautiful that you're explaining it and how you're describing um, how it feels to you when you're there. How long did it take when you were sitting to develop um, before you started experiencing the trans speaking in time? Was it like a couple years or was that almost immediate that that happened with you? It was all immediate. As soon as I started, I went to the first session, I, I went to a meditation group and that, that wasn't quite, you know, fitting with me. I didn't feel comfortable. But then I, I went back and, and I started to do the the trance and, um, oh, somebody's putting their messages up there. I can't see you now. <laughs> I see. I don't even know how to get yeah. rid of my messages. I'm just going to leave them there. So Yeah. So anyway, what was I saying? I, I started with a man that called George come through in the first group, and he made my body absolutely rigid. And it was really uncomfortable. It, it felt like the whole of my body was just tight. I couldn't move it, and then I, my face was kind of pulling. And, and he must have had a stroke before he passed. So when he came, uh, brought me out of it, 
what happened there was, as I said, look, if you want to come through me, please don't bring your what you suffered in life with through me. Just come to me as you are now, without your pain, without your suffering, and and be there just as you are. Don't give me your ailments because I've got enough pain on my own to put up with. So, <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good. So, I, you know what? I would have never thought to to say that, you know? Yeah. So that's actually good that you brought that up. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, because some people feel their ailments, don't they? And it, it's, it's not a pleasant feeling anyway. So if, if you don't want them to bring their pains with them, you know, just tell them. Say, you are in control. You're in control of your own being. So you have to say, well, use me, but don't abuse me. That's what my dad always taught me to say. I love that. I love that. Um, when you have come out, have you had any side effects um, when you have come out of trance? Have you felt, you know, totally drained, things like that? I feel quite drowsy. And, and now I know the reason for that because I... I I looked at uh, an explanation of that once and I realized that when you take your body into that relaxed state, you you know, when you wake up in the morning, it takes you time to come round, doesn't it? You you wake up, you open your eyes and you can't fly, always fly straight out of bed. You have to bring yourself round. So it's a bit like that in trance. When you've been in that relaxed state for that period of time, your body's got to start to wake itself up and bring itself around you can't if you're going to shoot out of it you wouldn't feel very well if you come out of it no. too quick you would feel quite rough you'd feel awful i i've been asked to hold back in trance before now and it actually made me feel physically ill wow wow so your body has to it, although it, you may think it is drained it's just been in a relaxed state for that period of time so you've You've got to bring yourself back to the, the normality again. That's why you yeah. feel as if you're drained. And once I come back into the normal state, I feel absolutely fine. I know I used to get very hungry when I came. When I came home from the trance group, I used to raid the fridge and I, I'd eat everything because I'd feel ravenously hungry. <laughs> so it oh can God. make you hungry. I, I've heard of that. I've heard members say that after they're done, they're either really hungry for chocolate um, or some have felt um, really sick, you know, but I'm sure that maybe they came out of it too quickly. So um, I know we talked a little bit about physical mediumship for yourself earlier on. Were your guides, are your guides trying to gear you in that direction? And you're just like saying, no, I'm not really interested. Well, I don't know what they're doing with me. Because one minute they say they're going to take me out of body, and I think, well, I'm nosy. I like to listen to everything, you know. <laughs> I like, don't want to miss it. <laughs> oh, my I goodness. I, I think to myself, oh, no, I don't I want to hear his voice, and and I don't want to listen to a recorded afterwards because they're the same. But um, it's nice listening to him, and, and then I'm out of the way. But sometimes when we're – in the middle, we're still getting in the way of it. So some of our personality still pushes through. So you've got to kind of push yourself out of the way as much as you can if you're still conscious because you don't want to interfere with what he's saying. So it, this is where most mediums doubt themselves. If they don't go into a deep trance, they immediately think that they're doing it because they can hear it all, you see? So they think it's them. But it's not. You're, you're, they have to use us. Mm -hmm. They they have to have some part of us there, otherwise they couldn't do it. But then the physical mediums, the majority of them, they go into a deep state of trials because they have to be used physically and objects need to move. So if, if they were in a half awake state, it just probably wouldn't work. But I've heard of um, mediums where, uh, like Leslie Flint, they only needed to use to talk so he could remain awake. But he'd sit in the cabinet and, and they'd still talk and direct voice, you see. Mm -hmm. So with with this medium state of trance, you're, you're half in, you're half out. You, but it's not inspired, but you are in a state, in a relaxed state. You're in an altered state, basically, aren't you? You, you could still hear what's going on. So, yes, don't doubt it. 
the more you let go, the more you trust in you, the better it's going to be. I've found that out. It's taken me years, years to trust him. Uh, I, I used to think it was an altered ego to start with. Then, I, then I'd start thinking, you know, things like, oh, are you evil? Have you got some ulterior motive? And I said, if you're real, prove it to me. And he started to prove it. And I said, right, if you're real, you have to give evidence to people. Okay, he said, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll give evidence to them. He's, but he's worked so hard. And I thought, well, every time in the bottom of my heart, I, I know he's, he's true. And I can't ignore that, you see. So it's do believe in you guys because they are there to help you and and they want to speak through you and they want you to trust in you and they want you to trust in them. And and I think that our ego mind has been taught to mistrust in anything that we don't recognise. So we immediately put up a barrier to protect ourselves with something that we're not rec recognising. You see, that's why we hold back with what we do in life. So the more you trust, the better it is. If you if you get a phys physical medium, they'll just fall asleep. They completely trust yeah. and they just go to sleep and that's that. They're, they're out of it. They know that spirit's going to take good care of them. But you do have to protect yourself. Yes, I would say, yes, do protect yourself because... Um, my father, uh, one night, he had a, a man called Paul speak through him, months on end, speaking, giving teachings. All of a sudden, my mum and my nan had a bit a tad of an argument in the group, and that's all it took. He was in. So do ask for protection. I, I've always been taught that. You know, it's, and think when you're working, think positive thoughts. You know, happiness, this is what spirit want. They want happy, they want positive, they want laughter, and, and they want love and they want light. So pray for that, ask for that, and think of that. Think and be in the light when you're working. That is the most important thing, and it's the most wonderful thing as well, you know. Who would want to be in anything else? Yeah. I've learned from my own experiences that you do need to ask for protection. And when you're having anybody in your circle, be sure that they are a positive person. You don't you don't want anyone that's bringing negative in or bringing negative thoughts or anything like that, or they're depressed. Yes. You know, it's not a good idea to stick with people or a per any person that is depressed. You don't want that sort of thing coming into the circle. They need to be happy, positive alert and and wanting to think that way okay so that's my advice to anyone that sits in a circle make sure that you um like jonathan says make sure you resonate with them make sure you you're fitting with them and you feel comfortable with sitting with them and then you know you've got positive thought coming in then that's my advice that's actually a great advice because even in my own circle we have you know, went through so many different things and it is, it's that absolute um, harmony that you have to have. Mm -hmm. And if um, somebody's in a bad mood, definitely, definitely don't be there, you know, if that's going to happen. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you on that as far as um, members and um, being uplifted, being there in service. Yeah. yeah. So, I think you might have answered this question already, but I'm not sure. Um, what has been your most difficult thing to overcome in your development? The trust. The trust. Anyway. That, that's <laughs> been the, uh, yeah, the most difficult thing is the trust in yourself and, and them, you know, mainly in yourself to start with because you think it's you and all of that. Your mind plays tricks, the ego mind and all that comes into it. And, and the more you let that go and the more you feel their love, then the better it's, it's going to be. It's the trust. That's what I've found the hardest. Wow. Okay, great. Yeah, I, you know what? I do have lots of people asking me and letting me know um, how they're feeling. And they, they ex are exactly like that. They're not sure, is this, is this just me or is this, you know, so they're always questioning everything. Um, but, yeah, 
Beautiful advice, beautiful yeah. advice. Do you have any advice on how to go deeper? But, you know, even while you go meet, you go to the medium area um, to allow your guides to have more control. Um, how would somebody be able to go deeper into a trance? If well, there's just like, beginning. If you, if you go into trance with music, you know, music has power over the brain, doesn't it? That's what Jonathan said on one of my live videos. I listened back to it. And he said that music takes you to different places and different emotions in your mind. And the more you, I find the more you listen to repetitive music that's uh, soft, gentle, and gently pulls you further in, that's the way to do it. That's, that's the amazing. way. If you find music, because not all, all people want to listen to the same music in your classes. What I used to do for them, I used to put their own individual music on that they uh, felt resonated with them. You could get one other that didn't like that music, so they didn't feel comfortable to go into trance with it. So I gave them all their own piece that they wanted. And some of them liked, all of them liked one piece particular. And then when they went down individually, they liked their own particular piece of music. I, I gave them their own choice of what they wanted. And I took them all into trance individually, one at a time, so that I could gain control over each one of them. If you take them all under, then you've got a lot of keeping an eye on to do. And you've got a lot. You've got to be in control, total control. Because if you're trance medium yourself, they start dragging you in, and you've got then you've got no control. You know, so you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to be strong. Wow. You know what? In um, our my circle, everybody uses their own music. So everybody they. You know, we do that and we all have our own. Um, yeah. So completely understand that. Um, so Elaine, you go live in your, first on your personal page you did, and then now you're going live in your um, your Facebook page. Why do you go live? I mean, I already know the answer, but why do you do this with Jonathan? Well, he said to me, he said, look, this has to go further. And I said, look, Jonathan, it's not about attention for me. I said, it's not about the fame. I said, I might get people that are, make nasty comments and then I'm going to get upset. He said, you're, you're going to have to get over that. Yeah. We have to get this out there. And now there has been a way to find to get you out there. And, and I need to spread this. He said, we need to get this further. You sitting in a little room every week with a group of people is not going to do that. He said, we have to go out there and we have to show them. And we have to uh, allow other people to, to find out what gifts they have so that they can spread it and then so on and so forth. It's like a dropping a stone into the water and then the, the, the ripple. So since I've been doing this, it's just gone absolutely mad. And, and people are realizing their own gifts and they're getting their loved ones through and what have you, which also brings them comfort. So it's, yeah. it's a mixture of all of that. And I, I was really nervous the first go. I thought, oh, no, I'm going to have all these people looking at me. It wasn't <laughs> much attention to start with. So I said, right, what do I do, Jonathan? I said, if this isn't going to work, I'm not going to do it. He said, well, we'll try again the next time. You'll, you'll be a bit more confident the next time. So I, I did it again. And then the third time, I thought, well, if I'm going to spread this out there, I'm going to have to set it on public. And I was really nervous about that because <laughs> I thought, what sort of feedback am I going to get? I'm going to get some nasty people, be uh, religious people, all sorts of things coming back at me and being nasty. And and the response I got was really good. And I thought, well, he obviously wants to talk. He obviously wants to teach people some whatever he has to do. So I set it to public and I must admit I, I did get a few comments but the more I got more positive than negative I, I got a few people that didn't understand it there are always going to be people out there that don't understand this yes. and and they will mock you they will hurt you they will try to put out the light in you but I'm afraid with me it's, it's not going to wash because yeah. I will still keep going yeah. you know you have to learn to brush it off it's easier said than done when somebody is coming at you with 
nasty comments, you take it to heart and you think, should I be doing this? And you question yourself and am I good enough? And this is what it's all about. Yeah. If you are that determined to to spread the word of this, this love, this awakening, then and you've got that much passion in you to do it, then go ahead and, and do what you have to do in this in this world. Don't let anybody stop you. That's what I would say. Um, you know, don't let anybody upset you. They just don't understand it, that's all. Yeah. Well, I think that by when I saw that you first were doing this, I mean, for the group, for me, I only interview trans and physical mediums. That's it. That's all I'm doing. And um, people at different levels of development so that other people will learn about it. That's all it is. And, and learn by others through others, um, how to develop themselves. But it's really getting the information out there. So when I see you going live, that takes a lot, especially if you're the first one doing it. And um, having that trust with your guide, yeah. you know, and you're actually, you're actually putting that um, trans mediumship out there. And yeah, you're going to get people that don't agree and, you know, but you know what, you got to keep doing what you're doing, you know, you got to um, have faith and trust and know that you're serving spirit and that's all you can do. So, um, but yeah, I love when I get to see you go live and um, I think that people are learning more about what trans mediumship is when they see you and then have Jonathan come through with this amazing voice that's completely different than yours and people are going to have their you know jaw drop I mean that's what happened to me um so we have actually went through every single question um and actually you actually answered more than I could ask so that's why it was so fast um but I know that you are are you are you is Jonathan going to come through well, if everybody wants it to come through, do they? And if they, well, you know what? I haven't, I'm pretty sure they do, but I do have some questions about for Jonathan, if he were to come through. So I would leave that up to you if you would like him to come through. Yeah, I'll, I'll let him through. I know they're all, they're all dying to hear from him. They, they are, they are. Him. They are. Yes, yes, yes. We're getting lots of yeses, so... Oh, someone's just said any message for me. Well, I, I don't do clairvoyance awake. It comes sporadically. So, you know, it's, it's the case of um, when, when, you're, when you're asking my guy to give you messages, everyone, he can't get through 50 or 60 or whatever people at the same time. It takes him time to tune into one particular energy. Where, whereas if you're sitting individually, your guy could tune into that energy and take time when it's trance, it's not the same as clairvoyance. You can't tune in to like all the people at once and expect him to give you messages from them. And that the fact that I can't see, so it it makes it difficult. And they're all sort of rolling through, you know. So it could none of your guides could do that because you're in a trance state, and they couldn't answer all the questions unless they've got somebody to um, ask a few, perhaps while they're going through. So. On his own, he can't do it. I know somebody asked here. Um, they said to me on there, I just caught a glimpse of it, something about uh, when did you go into trance on your own? Um, I, I can't really remember, you know. It's just sort of happened. Oh, my goodness. I, I would sit and relax, and all of a sudden he'd, he'd start coming through, and I'd be sitting in bed, and he'd come and talk to me. And I, But then I, he... he sort of brought me out himself i found i find i have to be brought out of it in circle because i'm under and it, it's going a bit further but when he comes and talks he brings me out of it himself and he not, seems to know what to do yeah mm -hmm. so are you ready yes okay and, okay
Ah, good evening to everybody. Good evening. <clears throat> yes. And how might you be, my dear lady? How might you be? Thank you so much for being here, Jonathan. I'm doing very well. We're looking forward to having you with us here today. Oh, wonderful. I have looked forward to this, and I have been waiting in the wings. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you have. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask a couple questions of you, um, and I hope that I have articulated these questions well. Um, was there already an agreement made prior to Elaine being born that you both would work together with your children. Yes, there was, my dear. Yes, <laughs> almost okay. certainly. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, in Elaine's development, what was your role? Were you always present in the very beginning as she was developing? Yes, I was. It was a, a few months after she started that I decided to make myself known to her. I felt that she was ready to receive me again and that she would remember me in that which she did, yes. Wow. Is there a whole team on your side that works with the medium here to, to help them develop, to, to help them develop? And do these helpers come and go? Yes, they do. You will find that uh, although you are learning here on Earth, we are still learning on the other side as well. So you will get from time to time that you will get souls coming in and they will speak through you for a little while. They will learn to communicate and give their information. And, and they are learning something from you and you are learning something from them. So they will do their bit and then they will step back and, and they may come back again at a later date to, to do a bit more or others will just come in very briefly and say something, and then they have done what they wanted to do, and they will step back, you see. So they are learning something. You are learning something from that. Okay. I, actually, I love that, that they're developing on both sides with the medium. Is there any advice that you can give to someone developing trance on how to go deeper to allow the guides more control? Going deeper is, is something that uh, we have to learn to work with as well. We will get used to a particular level of trance and we will get used to working through that. And as the medium goes deeper, we will have to learn to go through a deeper state of trance to be able to communicate physically with the voice, you see. So it is just as much work for us as it is for them, but it is more a case of trust for the human mind and for the spirit mind. It is more a case of learning how to communicate to a person that is in a deeper level of trance, you see. And, it, and it, it is not as easy as it looks, I can tell you, yes. Yes, yes, it, yes. Definitely not as easy as it looks. <laughs> um, is it recommended to have the medium sit in the power daily to blend with spirit, to develop trance? Well, with, with everybody, it's not always daily, is it? Some people have the time to dedicate to it and some people have earthly jobs to do and they have families to see to, etc. So you don't always have to sit in there for hours at a time, sometimes five minutes a day, an hour a day, whatever amount of time that you choose is, is, is teaching your mind to relax and, and tune into the other side. And, and once you have mastered that, you will be able to go into trance quite easily. Wow. Okay. So this is another interesting question, and a lot of members ask this. Your voice is definitely distinctly male. How did you manage to come through Elaine through her female voice apparatus? How did, are there, what was the mechanics behind that? If you could explain that. Well, the mechanics was, I would first uh, blend with her energy which is uh, greatly resonating with mine as we are twin souls. And then I would have to manipulate her vocality and use the deeper tones of her vocality, you see. So what we do is we work on the lower tones of a woman's voice. And, and then we will coat that with an ectoplasmic energy. And it's not like physical mediums where they have uh, 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 lots of 
energy oozing from that with those particular orifices, but we will use that sort of uh, ectoplasmic energy to cope the vocality so that we can then utilize that and, and bring it into the physical, you see. So the, the, uh, the tones of the voice in, in a human being will make a noise. They, they will uh, resonate with our energy and then they will come out as our physical voice. So what we have to do is uh, use our uh, spirit mind to impress upon the medium's mind. And then we have to work with that vocality as well to bring the voice forward. So we will step into their energy and then we are able to manipulate that. Wow. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Thank you so much for answering that. Um, another question is, as our technology grows, do those on your side encourage the further exploration of developing by means of online trance or physical mediumship development circles, this being done online? Is this something that the spirit world is encouraging? Well, it is, it is difficult to do trance online, my dear, because when you have to be in control of the medium that you are working with. And if they do not know much about what they are doing and it, things get out of control, you are not in the room to help them, you see. So you, it is better to have them present in the room than do it online. It, if, if you are going to talk about it, then yes, you can teach about it online, but actually doing trance with a person over the other side of the world, perhaps, you're not in control, are you? You're not, you're not being able to help them. It should something get out of, out of hand, do you think? Do you understand? Yes, yes. Okay. Can all members of a trance circle sit at the same time in the energy and allow spirit to decide who goes into trance? versus just one person in the circle being developed. It has been done. I know with the Lady Cave, when Elaine sat, she would take them all into the relaxed state. And then she would see who would bring spirit forward first. That is how it would work. Okay. But then she, uh, different people prefer to work in different ways. Some of the others prefer to take one at a time so that they can concentrate on that one particular being. But then you will find if they are, the, the sitter is new, they will feel under pressure. And so that's not always so good. So it, it is whether or not that person wants to let themselves go in front of all the other sitters, you see. They might feel a little bit uh, nervous about that. So perhaps take two and that you've got the other one to rely upon. Uh, but you need to be keeping an eye on them both. On both, yes. So this is a very interesting question for me because I've not seen, I mean, I've seen more judging as I've gotten into mediumship. Um, how do you, or the spirit world feel when they see mediums judging other mediums as to the validity of their work, of their I service that, to spirit. Sorry, my dear. I, I think that uh, it's always going to happen in your physical world. There are always going to be ones trying to step over another to get above one another. I think that it is uh, sort of fear-based, isn't it? they are particularly worried that somebody is going to overpower them and they're not going to be noticed anymore, you see? So that is what they worry about. It, it is an insecurity. Everybody's mediumship is different. You may get several trans mediums, but each one of them will work with a uniqueness. And, and each guide is different and each sitter is different, you see? So no two are the same. So why are you worrying about being better than one another? Why don't you all just go about doing what you do and don't be in competition with one another. Just enjoy the presence of spirit and the love that we give you. We all would want to speak through human beings on the earth, but we don't want it to be about a battle. We want it to be about love. love. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so I actually have one final question. Um, oh. Is there any advice that you can give somebody that is developing as a trans medium that's just starting out the advice i would give is again what uh, i always have inform elaine of and, and that is trust trust and and asking for that protection to be put around you before you start 
and I would always advise closing yourself down once you have finished. You could imagine anything that uh, depicts closing you in a beautiful energy that you would feel safe being in. Do you understand? So yes. it's closing yourself up afterwards, and then you're going to go about your normal daily life, you see, because you cannot walk about with your head in the clouds all of the time, can you? <laughs> yeah. 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 So you have to reach a state of uh, where the ego, or the, the logic mind, I'd rather say, not the ego mind, but the logic mind will come back into play. So, yes, I would recommend uh, meditation, trust, and, and relaxation, and, and then talking to the other side, talking to the guide and saying, well, I, I trust you, come in and be with me. You don't necessarily have to speak because I'm on my own, keep me protected, and I will feel your energy around me and get used to it. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, um, for answering all my questions. Um, I didn't have that many to ask you, but these are the ones that I really definitely wanted to ask of you. Um, thank you so very much. for. You are most welcome, my dear. Yes. Thank you. So perhaps I will say uh, God bless you all, and I will bring Elaine back now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Hello, Elaine. Thank you so much. It, thank you so very much. Um, and I had, I thought I had a lot of questions. I really did, but I'm glad that I asked the questions that I did. I really wanted to ask about the judgment. I really did because I saw that, and I'm. I had asked Jonathan a question about um, how the spirit world feels about mediums judging other mediums and their work and the validity of their work. And that was a very, that, that has been a, a big question for me because I've never seen so much judging until I got into mediumship. And that really bothered me because, you know, we're all working for serve. We're all serving spirit. That's pretty much it. And um, I just definitely wanted to ask that question. So I really loved his answer. And I'm so grateful to you for being with us today and sharing your story. I did not know you had that. Your father was a physical medium and you had this background and everything of every question that I asked you and how you described it. I will tell you that in all the different interviews I did, everybody brings a little something else to yeah. ponder. And, you know, it's, it's beautiful. I love these interviews. I love talking with people because they, and, and them sharing everything that they're feeling and how they felt about their own development. You are really helping so many people just by doing this interview. And I'm so grateful that we finally got to do this. Um, <laughs> we waited some time, yeah. Yes, we did. We did. And now I'm not so nervous about the live. And I know I wanted to address the audience because there's lots of comments going on, guys. And they're so fast, I can't even see the questions. So I'm definitely going to get on afterwards and, and check that. And I'm sure Elaine will too. Um, mm -hmm. Elaine, uh, first, let me go ahead and tell you guys one more time. You know, I've got all my notes all over town here because I was going through them so fast. Elaine's page on Facebook, if you have not um, joined her page, it is called Spiritual Wisdom. And she will be going live um, through that channel, right, Elaine? You'll be going live. Yeah, through I'll that never channel. go on there. I haven't tried it yet, but I will do. Yeah. Okay. And if you guys want to see any of her previous work, any other videos that she has, definitely check out her YouTube channel, Elaine Thorpe. 
and um and I, again the art and so i will post this in the comments or actually do a separate post with the art that she sent me and you will see pictures of jonathan um sneaking in her photos um but her art is beautiful she actually is for sale and is spiritually inspired so definitely check that out and elaine 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 thank you so very much for doing this with me today no well, thank you for having me it's been nice right. talking to you Oh, it is. It is. Um, so again, I know it's like going on ten o'clock for you in the uh, evening. Oh, yeah, it must be now. I think so. 10 yeah, ten o'clock. Perfect. Okay, guys. So I'm not like I said. There's tons and tons of messages, and I'm so grateful to you guys checking in with us and being here uh, and supporting us here. And um, Again, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Elaine. I wish you the best evening. And um, this will definitely be put in all the different groups. Again, if you guys um, are not sure about the group, it's Sacred Dance or Trance. And if you're guided to join, just join. Um, so many members. I think we finally hit 1,200 members today, which is wonderful. And uh, that's it. I'm just super excited to finally have talked to Elaine Thorpe. And meet Jonathan via online and um, you made my day. You made my day, Elaine. Oh, likewise. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, Elaine, so you have a great night and thank you for being with us again. Thank you. God bless. Okay, bye, Elaine. Bye, bye. guys. Bye.